I'm all right, thank you. you when, did you get, when did you turn religious? <laughs> when did I turn religious? That's a fair question. Well, obviously it wasn't at birth. No, so I, I'll tell you the story if oh. you want to hear it. Oh, is that boring? <laughs> is that boring? No, yeah, I, I, no, that I, and the camera. <laughs> I, 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 became, I became Christian when I was a teenager. Um, out of um, choice or is it yeah, out of a choice? Out, I'm saying as in your parents didn't choose. It was a choice. My parents are not Christians. Okay. Like this brothers. Uh, what religion were they? Or were they they're, they're, they're just materialists. They don't. They don't Isn't even people? think about religion. <laughs> Isn't people materialistic? You know what, I mean? what, what I'm saying is they don't have a philosophy, any coherent philosophy. They just are materialists. Okay. But I think they're coming closer to Christ. Be careful with them words. I'm not asking. Uh, I, think, I think they're becoming. Uh, I think they're coming closer to Christ. And I became. I became a Christian because a Muslim tried to convert me to Islam. Yeah, why seriously. did that make you go the opposite route? Because I, I, I discovered he was lying to me, and I hate being lied to. What was he lying about? So what he, he would say things like, "The Bible's been changed. Jesus never claimed to be God." What's the difference between Old Testament? The Trinity. And sorry. No, sorry. Well, you've asked one question. No. He listened the answer before you jumped no, to yeah, your next question. Probably, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. So he said that the the Bible's been changed. Jesus Christ never said he was God. Yeah. The Trinity doesn't make sense. Those were that the, the, the Jesus never died on a cross, and he what he would do is he would mix up half truths, but not tell me the rest of the story. Yeah. Being the kind of person that I am, I went and looked into what he was saying, and I discovered in every, all of his arguments, he was only giving me half the picture. Yeah. And if I read a bit more, I found out yes, there are textual variants in the Bible, but that the Christian faith existed before the Bible, and that the doctrines of the faith are not affected by any textual variant. Okay. I discovered that actually Jesus clearly and explicitly is called God and calls himself God and was called God by others. I discovered that actually the Trinity does make sense. So he made all these kind of lies and I read into them and I thought to myself, that, 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 that made me immediately suspicious of him. But what really did it is when I looked at the life of Muhammad and then the life of Jesus. And I was actually repulsed by many of the things that Muhammad did. But when I looked at Jesus, I found nothing that was repellent. Okay. All I found was something that was noble and true and just and kind and full of the richness and the honey of human kindness. But if, if it was, um, so you're, you're Christian or a born again Christian? Your, um, your, 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 <laughs> your ability to perceive reality is amazing. I don't know the difference between, amazing. I, know I am a Christian. Catholic, Catholic. I don't know the difference between. Um... There, there's only one. There's only there are only Christians. Okay. And there's one kind of Christian. All right. I think something's so happened. I'm getting to, to mixed up between Catholic and Protestant. Presumably. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if if a Christian came up to you and told you, I'm, he might not have been educated on the subject. He might have just give you what someone told him. He might have passed word, and maybe that's why it was incorrect. Or he might have just tried to give you a gist of whatever information. If a Christian gave you, it's that lower level. If a Christian gave you false details or bits and pieces and not the full details, would that have veered you off of being a Christian as well? I don't know. I can only deal with the history that I dealt with. Yeah. I can't, you know, I can't rewrite it. I think, I think part of what may, you've got to understand the thing that, that sealed the deal for me yeah. was when I looked at Jesus Christ. Yeah. He was a man who at a time when slavery was normal never had a slave. He was, a time, he, he was a man who, at a time when women were not treat with dignity in the same way that men were, yeah. treat women with equal dignity. Yeah. He was a man at a time when the world that he lived in had a narrative of revenge against the foreigner and avenge against the enemy. And he taught a generosity of spirit and of compassion that, that defies human nature, yeah. that, that makes us become our better selves. Because he says, don't be motivated from lust or greed or envy or wrath or malice, but be motivated by faith and hope and love and justice and prudence and chastity. Yeah. You know, and, and that, that kind of nobility en, en, enlightens the human soul and creates a better humanity. Yeah. You know, and I found that narrative completely attractive. My only issue, not issue, uh, my doubt of religion is obviously it's written by man itself. Yeah, you're gonna have to speak up. You can't speak out loud. Written by man, and even the story of Jesus Christ is still being written. It's obviously 
we aren't weren't alive to witness him or there's no factual evidence, no video evidence or obviously what hearsay of people I don't know or, or, can I ask you a question yeah by your logic are you saying that unless we caught it on film we can't know anything about history uh well, again, history gets changed by the winner, the, the victor of history, right? And mm. loads of war and loads of stuff has happened. Let me ask you again. Let me ask you again. Yeah. Are you saying that we cannot know anything about history unless it's caught on film? Uh, no, but I think it helps a lot. How do we know that Julius Caesar crossed the Rubicon? Exactly. What? In terms of a lot of history, it's, it's a lot of hearsay and it could be true. Not so you're saying we can't know anything about ancient antiquity? Mm, no, but in terms of like religion, I can't believe it because it's very, st it's mystical and fairy tale-ish and it's a lot of hearsay and it's well, all I, about... I, 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 would dis I would dispute a lot of, I would dispute everything you've just said. Yeah, go on then. Because the, the, the biographies of Jesus... Yeah. Yeah, were written by a community that that started because of an event in history and that event that happened in history was that a group of people who had seen their their teacher die on a cross yeah. later came to believe that he was walking and talking amongst them okay so you've got to ask yourself what was it that convinced that group of people that that actually happened now I'm not talking about Christians like me, yeah. i.e. later followers. I could be wrong. But what convinced the very, 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 very first people ever to say that Jesus had risen from the dead? It couldn't be... Uh, it's not a possibility that they could have lied. Why not? Why not? No, I agree with you. Why not? Why not? It's not a possibility? Or it's not a possibility. People haven't lied in the past about historical events. Do people lie to gain, or do people lie to make themselves poorer, persecuted, and hated? Well, I, I presume... When, when you lie, just speak yeah. as a human. So I know what you mean. No, one second. Yeah, one second. you lie to gain something. Right, right. That, that's the human not, experience, right? Yeah. When I lie, and I have lied, I'm not, I'm not a saint, then people that stick me on a pedestal need to remember that. I've lied in my life to gain, or to defend myself, yeah? Yeah. I'm not, I, I can't claim to be a perfect person. Have you ever lied? Of course. And when you lied, were you lying to either protect yourself or to gain something? It depends on the event. Or right, but I am, am I, am I... I've done both. Yeah, but would you agree that that's an accurate reason why people lie? For many reasons, but yeah, that could be two, that's a couple of them, yeah. Give me another reason why people lie. We're just exploring an idea. Sociopaths, they can lie about anything. Sociopaths lie about anything. They, they can lie about anything. Do sociopaths often lie because they hope to gain something? Yeah. They right, can lie. so they, we're back to gaining. Yeah. Or, can you give me another example of why people lie? Um, to get them out of trouble. To get them out of trouble, right. So now consider Paul. Okay. Paul said that on the road to Damascus, he saw Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah, and he heard him. And then what happened to Paul? Every city he went into, he started a riot. He was hated by Jews and Gentiles alike. He was beaten, he was whipped, he was homeless, he was shipwrecked. He was a despised individual. He was considered a, a social danger. And ultimately, he died on a cross. Does it seem human in terms of how we understand the human experience that a man would lie to make his life incredibly more difficult than, he, than it ever could have been otherwise. Is that the reason why people lie? No, but you don't think it's a possibility people can do that. Right, but but you're, you're marshalling an argument that you in your gut, in your heart, know yeah. doesn't make sense of the human experience. Was he aware that that would have happened beforehand? Well, I mean, he was persecuted for a number of years, so if he wasn't aware at the beginning, he soon became aware. Yeah. So he could have stopped lying at any point in time. Yeah. So why didn't he? He must have believed it. He must have believed it. Yeah. Right. So why? Now we go back to why. Because your first reason why he taught this was that he might be lying. But we've now explored that idea. We've seen that it doesn't make sense. So now we're back to the question why. Why did Paul go around saying that he had seen a man that everyone knew was dead come back to life? 
This what? is one person. No, it wasn't one person. How many people were this? You said it up to 500. 500. Why are you laughing? But I don't believe in. I don't believe that any of them exist. No, no I one's mocking. Always, yeah, no, no one's mocking you, bro. No, but, but the he's thing sarcastic is, laugh. no, no, it's, <laughs> but, but there's a ludicrousness about your position that you're unwilling to accept. Because you're saying, you're saying that this is a myth, right? No, I said it could be. It could not be. I'm, I'm not aware. right. Well, I'm I'm taking your argument seriously. That's why I'm exploring yeah. them. But I'm inviting you to take my argument seriously and explore it. Yeah. Right. So if lying is not a rational reason to justify why Paul went around teaching these things, bearing in mind that Paul also knew James, who was the brother of Jesus, mm -hmm. and there's every reason to believe that James would A, recognize who Jesus was, and B, know whether his brother was alive or dead or not, and Cephas, Peter, who was Christ's closest disciple, had spent years with him, following him, had said to him that we can't go anywhere else, O oh Lord, because you have the words of eternal life. Paul knew these two people, and these other two people were convinced that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. So it wasn't just Paul. In fact, these other two people I've just mentioned believed it before Paul. And Paul went to them and said, I'm teaching these things. And they said, yes, that's what we're teaching. Yeah. So he checked what he was teaching to make sure that he was teaching the same thing as they were. And they said, we agree with you. They held out the hand of fellowship. Yeah. So the question is, why? Why did they believe? Because they, they believed that it was true. They believed that it was true. Now, let me ask you this question. You know and I know that men don't rise from the dead. Yeah. Right? Do you think that people 2,000 years ago just believe that people rise from the dead? I think they believe in a lot of things that are untrue right now. They saw it more often. They knew that people did not normally rise from the dead. Yeah. That was the cultural matrix. But they're also more religious and they also had more... Wacky they had beliefs. more religious. Yes, they were certainly more religious. So the Jews at the time of Jesus, there were some Jews, the Pharisees, yeah, who argued with another group called the Sadducees. The Pharisees believed that at some future point in history, that everyone would rise from the dead together. The Sadducees denied the idea that anyone would ever rise from the dead. Once you're dead, you're dead, was the Sadducee position. Yeah? Yeah. Right? So there wasn't a cultural milieu to explain the belief that arose that a single individual would rise from the dead. Yeah. The people, people believe things because of their culture. So when we see an object in the sky that we don't understand, we see a light, People go, UFOs, is it a UFO? Oh, it could be a UFO. Why? Because we've been raised on 60, 70 years of scientific mo yeah. sci fi movies. Yeah. Yeah, so every light in the sky becomes an alien. Yeah. That's the cultural category that we use to explain unexplainable events in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. The Jewish people at the time of Jesus did not have a category for a single individual to rise from the dead. They didn't have that. Yeah. It wasn't there. Right? Yeah. So when it end at a question, why did they believe it? So convinced, why were they convinced? What would convince you, bearing in mind that you don't have a category for a single individual rising from the dead, what would convince you that a man has risen from the dead? Seeing it. Seeing it. We've gone down a topic that I'm not uneducated and unaware of. Yeah, that's fine. Like that. But what I'm saying to you is the people 2,000 years ago were every bit as skeptical as you are. Yeah. And you've just said, and I agree with you, that the thing that would convince you that a man had risen from the dead is if you saw it. Yeah. That would convince you. Yeah. That's what convinced them. Yeah. So if a man did rise from the dead, what does that say? Yeah. My topic I want to go on is more of religion and millions of people believing without witnessing or seeing and, and blind faith or faith. Or you know, but I've discounted all of them. Yeah. I'm not talking about any of them. Yeah, and you're talking about a subject I'm aware of. I am, I am talking about the very, very first people <coughs> ever in history to say Jesus had risen from the dead. Yeah. And you agree with me, because we're both in agreement, that the only thing that could have convinced these people who did not have any conceptual category yeah. for a single individual rising from the dead, with the full knowledge of what death meant, to believe that a single man had risen from the dead is if they actually saw it. But where is this documented in terms of, of all these people that witnessed this? 
in the Bible, right? Okay. It's in the Gospels, Gospels. Uh, and the letters of Paul. Yeah. And did they write this in, the, or was this hearsay from someone else that passed through to, that wrote it in the Gospel? Well, no, the, the, the Apostles' teaching existed mm -hmm. prior to any of the writings. And I just, I just want to demonstrate that to you because lots of people misunderstand well, this. What I mean part. is, it, was the Bible written in the same time, or was it written in a long? It was written later. It's a historical account. That's why it's called a. That's why it's historical evidence. Yeah. And it is legitimate historical evidence why because is that? It's past because time. because all accounts of history are retrospective. When you go away today, if you wrote down an historical account of today, it's after the events. Mm -hmm. There can never be. Well, now that we've got cameras, we have something that's real time. But every, ev but before the invention of the camera, all history was retrospective. So we can't dismiss history just because it's retrospective. Mm -hmm. But I want to show to you that the beliefs were there before any of the books were written. In other words, people didn't believe because of the books. They believed and then the books were written. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just want to demonstrate that to you. Because the Bible admits that openly. We're not ashamed of this fact. Yeah, I, I want to show it you in just two places. It won't take very long. No worries. So, at the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, it says, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile an account of the things accomplished amongst us, just as they were handed down to us by those who were, um, sorry, amongst us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses, and servants of the word it seemed fitting for me as well having investigated everything carefully from the beginning to write it out for you in an in a consecutive order most excellent Theophilus okay so Theophilus believes these things mm -hmm. and then he commissions Luke to write down the stories that are circulating okay. amongst the community in an orderly way from beginning to end so he has an orderly account yeah? Okay. That means that these people believed before the gospel was written. Okay. Which means, why did they believe? They believed because someone preached it first. Now, the second generation of Christians, the, the people that the first Christians ever converted, we can discount their witness. Mm -hmm. We're just dealing with the apostles, okay. the very people who went out preaching this stuff. Yeah? Okay. Those are the people that we've got to think, why did they believe? And it, you've put your nail, you put the nail on the head, mate. It's because they saw it. Why I would they see it? it? I, I said that <laughs> if they believed it, yeah, but also they could pass it through and they could have believed it via someone else telling them and then they took it as gospel for, for believing them. But that's not what, that's that, but, but then all you do is, you, all you're doing is pushing the issue back. We're still talking about the very first people who'd said. Yeah. Right? So forget anyone other than the very, very first. Mm -hmm. What made the very, 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 very first, the absolute first, the uniquely first people yeah. who preached that Jesus had risen from the dead preach that thing? Yeah. That's the challenge that I'm throwing at you. The challenge is, well, I'm, I can't receive it, is people believing people and that there's f people are flawed. But you're still making an argument based upon the idea that they believe because someone else told them. I'm saying forget the yeah, second people, the people that believe. The people that said that they witnessed The very it. first. Yeah. People, there's a lot of crazy people out there, man. So you're right. So now you've marshaled an argument. You've said they're crazy. Not in any way. Mentally deficient. Mentally. Could, so they're crazy. Mentally deficient. Mental people. health before he was even diagnosed. Right. I don't. You don't right. know whatever. Hold it on could one be. second. Hold on one second. Would you agree? No. I'm gonna see. What I'm gonna do is I am going to treat your argument seriously. Okay. Don't have to. Right. Well, no, I want to. I want to because there's thousands of. You brought up this topic. Right. right. And I'm arguing against something but, that I'm not aware of. But that's of fine. Really. But what I'm inviting you to do, just as I'm taking your argument seriously, I want yep. you to take my argument seriously. Okay. Okay. So let's deal with the idea that they are crazy. Would you agree with me that mental illness mm -hmm. and psychopathic illusions is subjective to the individual? Uh, subjective to the individual meaning they are only witnesses. In that, in that each crazy person is crazy only in their own mind. Mm -hmm. It's not like I can infect you with my craziness and make you see the things that I'm seeing. Mm. Uh, uh, through childhood you can do that. You can give trauma events and make them believe in things. We're not, we're, not, we're not talking about children, we're talking about adults. We're yep. talking about a collection of adults who each individually 
came to believe that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, if they're all nutters, right, yeah. they'll all be nutters in their own way. Because <laughs> craziness is unique to each person. Every, every nutter is a special kind of nutter. <laughs> yeah? If you don't believe me, look at Zachariah in the park. <laughs> you know? Every nutter is a special kind of nutter. Yeah. Right? You don't get collective nuttiness, <laughs> except in cereals. Well, right? There are loads of the same kind of, they're, they're diagnosed now, you can, you can get loads of the same similar kind. Yeah, but, but someone who's having a schizophrenic episode <coughs> will yeah. have a unique schizophrenic episode. But your, they, your argument is essentially that a bunch of schizophrenics got together and decided to have a common illusion, well, you a did, hallucination. Well, don't you think that a huge event, which was Jesus getting nailed to the cross, and everyone uh, either believing or not believing that he could be the second, he could be the God, or the Messiah, the Messiah, whatever you say, and that he died, and that he said, did he say you're going to rise? I don't know. I, he did I, say he was going to rise again. Exactly. He did. And, and then loads of people can say that they witnessed him rise. And have a psychotic. So that go, that goes back to them lying again. No, no, they can believe that. They right. Can, so, so can be convinced right. that they saw him. So, but but let's let's look at this, because the 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 Christian community, yeah, bearing in mind that the people that were the apostles were people who were married. Peter was married. Mm -hmm. People who held down jobs because they were fishermen. They were tax collectors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know if you know anything about mental illness. Uh, I've got, I've got <laughs> Are you guys related? Yes, uh, oh, okay, yeah. right. So people, people who have genuine mental illness uh -huh. tend not to marry. They don't tend to hold down jobs. It's a very tragic situation and people with mental illness need a lot of support and help from wider society that should have compassion and solidarity with them. Yeah. But anyone who's ever dealt with anyone who's got mental illness knows that if your mental illness is of such a degree that you will have an hallucination of that kind, you're not going to be able to marry and you're not going to be able to hold down a job and you're not going to be able to function as a human being. All of the followers of Jesus followed Jesus as adults and that included tax collectors who were people that held down very high ranking jobs in society yeah. but they were hated and fishermen who were very poor in society like the factory worker today. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with being a factory worker, I've done it myself. So these are not people with mental, these are not people that we can see with having mental illnesses. Yeah. Okay, now Bart Ehrman, in his book, The Triumph of Christianity, or The Triumph of the Church, or whatever the book's called, someone will stick it in the, the title, he says that there were about 70, a core of about, well, I, I can't remember exactly the number to be honest, it's about 25 to 75, a core of 25 to 75 people who came to believe that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. Yeah. You cannot coordinate that many people with mental illness to say the same thing. Yeah, but do you think they can all have the same hallucination in terms no. of... No! In terms of a guy saying he's the second coming and they could have believed that he First was. coming, first coming. First coming. <laughs> second coming comes later. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're debating on a subject. I'm <laughs> but now, let, now I, let me invite you to take my argument seriously. Yeah. Okay? That the reason why this collection of individuals came to believe that a man that they knew had died, had risen from the dead, is yeah. because it actually happened. And if it actually happened, then that means something has to change about your life. Because if a man rises from the dead like he said he would, then you've got to take seriously everything else he says. Yeah. And he says that he is the living God. He says that he is the Savior. He says he is the fount of all truth, the basis of all being. And that means that we have to reorientate our lives from a kind of selfish self-interestedness to enter into the community that he founded and to work for the kingdom that he established. And that is a kingdom that seeks to challenge the injustices of poverty, to set captives free from things like addiction and from being trapped in ignorance. It's about healing the sick and those who are suffering. It's about standing up to injustice like caliphates and communism. Yeah. It has to change who you are. To be a Christian man is someone who lives in relationship with God above at a vertical level and with his brothers and sisters at a horizontal level. And he lives out his faith individually and collectively. Yeah. As an individual, I do what I do. 
but I'm doing it collectively with JC. And even though I've only just met this cousin of yours, yep. I will stand with him because he is my brother in Christ. Mm -hmm. He has now as much fidelity from me as he does from you. But you owe him an obligation of loyalty because of blood ties. Okay. I owe him an obligation of fidelity because we were baptized with the same baptism, we received the same Holy Spirit and we were saved by the same blood, Jesus Christ. And he to me is more dearer now than even members of my own family who reject Christ. So someone that rejects Christ or doesn't believe, you don't see them as a brother? I don't see them as a brother in Christ, no. Why not? Because Christ established a community, the church, and that community is a family, mm -hmm. it is a, a, a collection of servants to one another, they are brothers and sisters, they are disciples of Christ, they have a great deal in common, they're following a common narrative, they have a common history that goes down 2,000 years, mm -hmm. they have common values, they have common beliefs. And those things to me are more precious, more precious than anything else. Any other bond that I might have is secondary to that bond that I've just described. Even if they don't have the same um, religion or religious ideas, you don't, you well, don't take them do as a families, Do them. families always see eye to eye? No. No. Do you say that your, your cousin is not your cousin just because you don't agree? <laughs> no, obviously not. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same. He's my brother. If we don't agree on everything, I don't just turn around to him and say, well, you're not part of the body. Someone that isn't Christian. Right. Someone who's not Christian. And I want to be clear because it can be misunderstood. I'm not trying to say that the dignity of a non-Christian is less than that of a Christian. Mm -hmm. You have dignity that is equal to my own because you are made in the image of God. When I look at you, I see someone who's made in the image of God. When I look at my brother, I see someone who's made in the image of God. But me and him are striving to become like God in the way that we behave. And so we have a fidelity that brings us closer together that you can't share in because you don't believe. That doesn't mean I'm going to denigrate you, but it means... in a sense, no? Well, what it means, what it means is I owe him, your cousin, I owe him an obligation Mm -hmm. that is above that of his dignity being made in the image of God. He is a fellow pilgrim on the way to heaven. He's a journeyer with me on the journey towards our God, our kingdom. He's a fellow citizen. He has all the same rights that I do, all the same responsibilities. Yeah, but isn't that the same as a new person without a religious idea or views? No, we have a dignity that is given to us. Yeah. How, how can you share fellowship with us if you don't believe? have to believe in anything. Right, so, so that means that there are things that me and him can do together that I can't do with you. Which is what? Pray, take the sacraments, um, fight for the kingdom of God. No, actually, you can, you can fight for that bit. Stand up for the cause of the church. Yeah. You can do that bit. But, but there, are, there are things that me and him can do that we can't share, me and you. Now that doesn't mean but I'm inviting you, bro. What I'm inviting you to do is to join your cousin in being a family together with us. Yeah. With JC, with this, here, yeah. with this brother here, with this brother, God willing, yeah. you'll become need, a Christian. I don't, need, I don't need to be religious to be a good person. Or do you think that that's the point of religion? Uh, well, obviously there seems to be some other special bond in terms of uh, uh, understand bonding and being nice to each other and being one with each other and all that. But you should do that with anyone, everyone, anyway. Well, I mean, to, 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 that kind of narrative doesn't mean anything. Because all that says is that nothing is important. Neither is praying or, or, or believing in the same thing. But, but that kind of narrative doesn't mean anything. Because what you're essentially saying is nothing is important. Nothing is of value. It's no, a nihilistic narrative. People's happiness and love is important. And people's even... happiness and love? Yeah. Yeah, but what happens when what makes one person happy conflicts with what makes another person happy? Whose happiness wins? Did you say that again? Sorry. So if two people see happiness in a different way, yeah, which is and those the case. exactly, and those two views to happiness conflict with one another, how do you decide whose happiness gets to win? Law. I don't know. Law. So what you're saying here's the moral problem with an atheistic logic, because when you assert law as the definition of morality, mm -hmm. you have no basis upon which to object to immoral laws. Yeah, I do. 
on what grounds? My morals. Depends your morals. So what makes your morals special and not someone else's? Depends on what makes your morals special compared to any other religion. Good question. Good question. In terms of, in terms, and that's when you've got to ask the question about what is truth. Because I believe that there is an objective thing called truth. And that truth can be found by those willing to seek it out. And truth is that narrative that most accurately corresponds to reality. Okay? And if you follow that maxim, I believe you will become a Christian. Because Christianity will... You, because I believe you're made in the image of God. When you find those things that are noble, like following a life of love and faith and hope, yeah. pursuing justice, prudence, chastity, these things will resonate with you. They will resonate with you because the image of God in you corresponds to the way that God created the world. And so these things that are noble will be attractive to you naturally. As in doing good. As in, as in being good. Yeah. Yeah? But the point of religion isn't to be good. The point of the, point of the Christian faith yeah. is that God has offered you salvation and acceptance and adoption into his family. Only if you... you if, only if you choose to be so. He's not going to yeah. force it on you. No. Yeah? He's not going to force it on you, which means I have no right to force it on you yeah. either. And if I don't choose that... Then that's mistake. your choice. Yeah. And, and on judgment day, you will face up to those consequences. Because you, if you die having rejected Christ, then if you have not kissed the ring of the sun, then you will have to pay for your own sin. You will have to take responsibility for all the things that you've done. Yeah. And there is no salvation for you. Yeah, I disagree with you. Meaning you're always, you're, you're born in sin and you have to be forgiven yeah. and earn your way out. So. No, you don't earn it. It's given to you as a free gift. Christ, got, it says in our faith that you can't earn your salvation. There's nothing you can do that is good enough to earn salvation because God is too holy. Yeah. To use an analogy, if I gave you a cup of water and I put just a couple of drops of cyanide in that water, yeah. you wouldn't drink it. Yeah. Why? Because it's poison. The fact that it's majority water doesn't mean yeah. that it's suddenly safe. And so it is with sin. There are many people, in fact, the vast majority of people live almost good lives. But everyone sins, everyone's a sinner, everyone has failed to live a pure life. But the only life acceptable to God, the Father, is a pure life. And no one can achieve that. Yeah. So what God does is he himself comes down as Christ, he lives that perfect life that we are unable to live ourselves, and then that sin that we should be punished for, that we should pay for, he ransoms yeah. as the sacrificial lamb. And thus, that punishment, sin is punished, so God remains just. Yeah. Because if God just forgave you without punishing your sin, then he's merciful, but he's not just. But then because he has, been, because he has punished sin and forgiven you, you can then enter paradise. So God is also merciful as well as just. Which is why, by contrast, the, the God of Islam, for example, is a horrendous God. Because he is a God that is either merciful and does not punish sin, or he is a God of justice without mercy because he punishes sin and he doesn't give mercy. But in the Christian faith, you find both. You find both the mercy of God and the justice of God being offered to you whilst you were a sinner. Is what the Bible Only says. Only if you follow. His You've got to accept it. Yeah. yeah. If I offer you a gift, you can refuse it, right? Yeah. And if you refuse that gift, that means you miss out on the benefits of the gift, right? Yeah. But and that's what God is doing. He's offering as a gift. Well, what if I was ignorant and I wasn't understanding? And you, well, you mean like an Amazon in the rainforest? Yeah, even that. Yeah. Well, let's deal with that. It's a fair question. I like fair questions. <laughs> um, th th God is just, and God expects every person to respond to the degree of revelation that they've received. Right now, you are aware. And now you have a responsibility to investigate the truth, to search for the truth, and to find it. 
And once you've found it in good conscience to accept it and live by it, yeah. you, then you have to pay the price of that choice. And that is a perfectly acceptable thing. We make people deal with their choices every day in society. Yeah. We get that because that is how God has structured the cosmos. That is how he's structured us. We are made in his image. So or we are constantly trying to reflect God in the way that we behave. Yeah. You know, your, your pursuit of beauty and truth and justice come from the fact that you're made in God's image. Yeah. And that corresponds to Christ's teaching. It corresponds to... So when you say God's image, uh, as a... Go on. Humans are so, um, what's it called? We, uh, yeah, saying we're God's image, saying we're the perfect being, saying that. I, 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 Go on, explain. I highly doubt that. I don't, I don't, we, we think we're much more special than we are. In term, yeah, I think, I think that human beings, I agree with you, human beings have an anthropocentric, Anthropocentric. Yeah, right yeah, that's yeah. the world. Well, yeah. like they, 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 they have an anthropocentric view of the world that does not correspond to the reality. And then if you tell them that they're the image of God, don't you think that all that feeds that? No. I think that actually if you understand that you're made in God's image, what you're saying is that there's someone more important than humanity. Because we're made in the image of someone. Which means that the image bearer is not as important as the divine, the actual divine image. Yeah. Yeah. It's like say you wouldn't say that a photograph is as important as the person. Yeah. And it's the same with us. So saying that we believe in that when man is made in the image of God, doesn't encourage man to arrogance. It encourages man to a profound humility. Because that says that we aren't the center of the world. Yeah. That we aren't the center of the cosmos. We're not the center of the universe. We are not the most important thing. That there is an authority above our parliaments. Yeah, but with the second, the second most important. Um, I think that the love of God is so rich and abundant that it is can seem that way. But clearly, God has created. Well, a, we're the image of God, and nothing else is on Earth. Yeah. Which is ninety nine percent, ninety nine point nine percent of everything. Yes, man, ha man is extinct. Man definitely has a special place in. Well, what about all the other things that? All the stink that was before us. And your point being, are you so why, are why you, aren't they, they that more? But why aren't dinosaurs more important? That's though? that's like asking an architect, why did you do build the house with two chimneys rather than one? You know, no, you, you no. can't you can't turn around to the creator and say, well, you should have made it this way. No, no, no. That's us just saying we we are made this way, and it's saying we're the most important. But what no, it's not. Before it's us? saying there's something else that's more important. Yeah, but we're, we're made of that it's the most important thing. We are made in the image. Which is God. pretty similar to being yeah. as important. And what does that mean? What does that mean? It means, it means that, that you bear a responsibility to live in dignity and to give the dignity that you see, that give that same dignity to every other human being. Yeah. Because they're made in the same image as you. But if you believe that, I, don't I think, believe I don't that. Think <laughs> yeah, so that, that now let me actually ask you this question. If you don't believe it, yeah, human beings are nothing special, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 hold as, on, as, as, as in pigeons hold are, on. as in hold any on. other, exactly. Animals. We're not as in, well, we're not as important as a pigeon or bacteria or, or a rat or a bacteria. So, if we're not as important of these things, how would you justify killing rats in your house? Oh. It's as important as killing other people in wars and other things like that. Reli so, and same with so, religion or so whatever. You have, so you have just said that killing a rodent in your house is a, an equal crime to killing a human being. What, Does that resonate animal? with you? Does that resonate with you? Does, is that, do, you, do you honestly, in your mind, think Not that that's in, true? Not in terms of our laws, but in terms of human nature, it shouldn't be the case. But, but, so you think it should be that way? It should be illegal to kill a rat like it should be illegal to kill a human being? If, if everything was perfect. Now, why are you striving towards perfection if there is no metaphysical reality that, beyond the material world? That's, that's, isn't that how we got this far from where well, we used to be? Exactly, to exactly. Perfect. Perfection drives us forward. But you, you're, you're arguing from a telos, you're arguing from a perfect point that you think we should strive towards. That's what we are striving but, towards. Exactly. Right? But if, if there is no God, then you can't speak about a metaphysical reality called perfection. Well, perfection is what, purely what, what subjective. matches us, necessarily, it matches human beings. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying to you. 
is that there is, because of your image of God, yeah. if you explore truth, you will find it. Yeah. Because those things that, that drive you towards the image of God will resonate with your soul. Yeah. And you should listen to that. But this is what I'm saying so is that, how important. So that nobility, that nobility of living by love. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, well, if it's I just a chemical response in the brain, it's not really... That's just clutching at straws, friend. If you're just saying that it is just a chemical response in the brain, you're saying it's of no value. Well, in ten, terms of weight or, or anything. Are you saying that it is of no value? Nothing is of value. So the love of your mother is, means nothing. I feel really man. sorry for you, <laughs> sister. I'm so sorry. You're talking to the wrong man. So talk, talk, <laughs> talk, talk, talk to your mother and father and tell them that your love means nothing. I wish I'd meet you, Dad. Where, where are you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. All right, all right, fair enough. <laughs> that, 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 thanks, Mum, yeah. for beating me half an hour. What about, what, about, what about your cousin? What about your love means <laughs> nothing for him. This guy loved me. He would give me a sandwich. He would watch my stuff. Anyway, brother. Anyway, brother. I think. I think if you think about it. Yeah. You, you will recognise that what you've just said. If you see my negative outlook in life. If I attacked your brother right now, what would you I'd, do? I'd laugh. Oh, whatever. Because <laughs> no, no, the way he looks up to you, because he's really. Whatever. You wouldn't. You'd defend him. No. You'd see. No, you would. Definitely not. Depends if you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> if it's an equal fight, I'll have a laugh uh, about it. Uh, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, my upbringing and my outlook of life um, is a lot different from other people. I had a different upbringing. Yeah. Maybe it makes me more awoke, more, 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 my eyes more open. Maybe it makes me more negative. It depends on how I, everyone's outlook is different. Yeah. Everyone can be enlightened by religion or I, I understand the message. The message of every religion, I in a don't nutshell, think you do. is love, no. care for each other. No, that is not the message of every religion. Well, well the message of your religion is God is, you, you had to repent or you're going to go to hell. The message of my religion is more than that. More than that, but if you... That's an that, aspect of it. A big aspect. <laughs> it, certainly, it certainly is the, the starting point. But there's if you, more if you don't if you don't follow us or you you don't repent you're no gonna, not us you're... no 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 follow Jesus not me don't follow Bob yeah. follow Jesus that's what I'm saying follow follow Jesus but this is where I get confused in terms of because I don't really study really I understand certain aspects of it I don't really go out my way because I don't believe in it so therefore I don't really want to read it and, and look into it I hear what I hear and then I go, yeah whatever when you say Jesus is Jesus supposed to, is you see it as God or is Jesus it... is God yes. Okay, it's not, it's not God's son. Or this, this is, I mean, I, I understand why people get confused by this terminology. Because the son of God term yeah. is Christian shorthand for saying the son of the father. Okay. Okay? And that, that uh, to those that are not initiated to how to understand the language, yeah. I, I get it completely why that's confusing. Yeah. But we're not saying that, that the son of God is distinct from God. We're saying that the son is distinct from the Father. Okay. So you'll heal Christians in the same breath go, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God. Yeah, because he's... Yeah? Because he is not the Father, he's the Son of the Father, but, he's, but he is divine in the same way the Father is divine. Direct from, yeah, because yeah, he's directly from God. Yeah. Because you see, if the Father is eternal and unchanging, yeah. then that means he must have always been the Father. Yeah. Now before creation, who was he the Father to? Yeah. It must be the son. So the father has always been the father and the son has always been the son. It's logical, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you believe it. Anyway, brother, I'll give you a lot to think about. I want to have for... you got a Bible? No. I want to give you a gift. I, I, Come on, no, accept no, no. it. Come on, in humility, I'm, I'm, accept no, it. No, no, no. Go on. I'll be nice and say yes, all right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry. Have a read of it. I don't mean to be rude. Yeah. But I'm, I, I'm saying it would be better to someone that is religious. No, no, I, I want, I'm giving it to you as a gift to read. Okay. Yeah? Investigate the claims. Don't start in the Old Testament, start in the New. So that's starting in Ma uh, Matthew. Because Christians have a concept of covenants. The whole, the whole of the Old Testament yeah. is covenants pointing towards Jesus. Yeah. So if you start in the Old Testament, it'll be a long time before you get to the central important figure. Yeah. Start with the central important figure, yeah. and then all the prophecies in the Old Testament make sense. Yeah. Okay. Have a read of it. Talk to your cousin about it. Come and speak to me about it. Yeah. It's a real pleasure to speak with you. You're better at debating than me. You've debated a lot more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're used to this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Look after yourself, bro. You too, man. Have a great day. Take care. Okay, guys. 
See you later. Peace with right, you. Peace with you. Remember what we said. Yeah, we'll do. Be a, be a listener and an observer today. See you later. Yeah, until you, until you can get the better of your friends. Don't debate in the corner. Yeah, yeah. but you know what I mean. Yeah. So, we just had a, a discussion with a brother, an atheist, who is faced with the same challenge that I present to anyone who's an atheist. In a world in which there were no categories to understand the idea of an individual rising from the dead, on what basis, therefore, on what basis, on what, on, on, on what event could people come to the conclusion that a man 2,000 years ago actually rose from the dead? People lie because they seek to benefit from lying. All of the apostles suffered terribly because of their lie. That's not why people lie. So that isn't a good explanation as to why they came to believe that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. And people with mental illnesses don't hold down jobs and get married. People with mental illnesses have subjective mental illnesses that are peculiar to them as individuals, not collective hallucinations, consistent with the idea and the claims that were made by Christians of a man rising from the dead. So the question always goes back to, what was it that convinced the absolutely very first people that Jesus rose from the dead? And I put it to you that the reason why they came to believe that is because it actually happened. And if it actually happened, then that means you have to change your view of life, the world, and what you should be doing.